So we look at the top of the note page. It says angle pair relationships in many proofs. So we're going to start really small. Okay. When you interpret a diagram, you can assume information about size and direction only if it's marked. So don't make assumptions. We know what happens when you assume. Using the diagram that's to the right, so that plane that's given, plane P, we're going to circle all of the following statements that you can assume to be true. So if you're watching the video, pause it and go ahead and circle all of those statements that you can assume to be true, and then press play for the answer. So given these answers here that are circled, the point of this exercise was not to frustrate you, right? But you need to be told, so in a proof, you will be given statements that are called givens, okay? And based on those givens, you can then make a conclusion. So let's start to take a look at some of the statements and reasons in the proof, okay? The first row, anytime two lines intersect, you have vertical angles. So I'm going to put some numbers in here, one, two, three, and four. Anytime two lines intersect, you can then conclude that vertical angles are congruent. So which angles Anytime two lines intersect, you can conclude that vertical angles are congruent. Who can give me one? angle pair. So for instance, angle one is congruent to, Caitlin, angle three. And then angle two is congruent to angle four. So anytime two lines intersect, you can conclude that vertical angles are congruent. All right, the next row. Anytime you have two angles that form a straight line, that means you have a linear pair, and what's true about the measures of A and B? They add up to 180. So we don't, in proofs, say the measure of this plus the measure of this. We never use measurements. It's all in terms of congruency, just to give you a heads up. So the way we want to phrase this is A and B are, what's that vocab term to describe two angles whose uh, some of their measures is 180? Katura? Supplementary. So we want to say that A and B are supplementary, and you'll see what happens down below. And that reason is because linear pairs are supplementary. In the last two, okay, so in row three, it says that one and two are supplementary, three and two are supplementary. In the bottom row, it says four and five are complementary, and then six and five are complementary. What do you notice in both situations? One and two, three and two. They have a common angle, right? Same down below, four and five are complementary, six and five are complementary. Okay? So if two angles are supplementary and they add up to 180, so if you think about this for a minute, don't write this down, and if you're watching the video, erase. Let's say one and two. Let's say one, let's actually say two is 130. What would angle one have to be if it's supplementary? 50 and then three? So if you have two angles that are supplements of the same angle, that means one and three are congruent. That's going to be the same for complementary. If they both add up to 90 and they're complements of the same angle, that's going to mean that four is congruent to angle six. So say five um, was 60 degrees. 4 would have to be 30 to add up to 90, and so would 6, so that they add up to 90 as well. 
So the response or the reason is that supplements of the same angle, or I'm going to put, or congruent angles, and you can always use symbols and proofs. If you have a symbol that can replace a word, I remember Jack Callahan a few years ago was trying to find a symbol for every word. Um, if you have, there's a symbol that can replace a word, you can use it. So supplements of the same angle or congruent angles are congruent. And then the row below it is the same reason, except for supplements we're going to say complements. So of the same angle or congruent angles are congruent. These reasons have to be phrased exactly how you see them in your proofs. So you have to memorize the wording. That's it for the statements that we're going to look at today. Okay? So take a look at example number one. on the following page. So in one it says in the diagram to the right AB, the segments AB and CD intersect at point E. Explain why vertical angles are congruent. So why are they congruent? We know they're congruent, we have this here, but why are they congruent? So when I explain, and I'll show you strategies, even on a state test, I like to bullet. Okay, so why are the vertical angles, or why is angle one congruent to angle three? Well, the first thing we're going to use is the fact that one and two form a straight line, and they are supplementary as well as 3 and 2. So I'm going to say my first bullet, angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. And angle 3 and angle 2 are supplementary. And then when I bullet, I like to put the reason why to the right side. And I kind of line them up. So I know that to be true because linear pairs are supplementary. Now, because 1 is the supplement of 2 and 3 is the supplement of 2, we can finish by saying that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 or vertical angles are congruent because, let's line it up over here, supplement of the same angle are congruent. And I know that's the proof language, but I also find the proof language very helpful in my write-ups. And I'll use the same. Go ahead and scan the algebra properties. You remember those? The addition property of equality. You remember solving an equation last year and you had to justify your step? Line by line. Oh, you hated it? Now, we're not going to use necessarily these properties of equality because I said before, we don't ever talk about measurements and proofs. Measurements would refer to equivalence. So therefore, we're going to look down here and use these properties of congruence. Same thing. So if you take a look, you're just going to see through here, the equal signs are placed with congruency symbols. So you can scan through those. Reflexive and substitution are two new properties that you have yet to see. 
the reflexive property is that a quantity is congruent to itself. And that may be a little odd to you right now. I need to actually show you in an example what that means. Substitution is just like a substitute coming in for me. If you have someone that's coming in to replace me, that's an equivalent. Okay? Not always do you get another math teacher, so it doesn't necessarily work, but a quantity may be substituted. Substituted or replaced for its congruent quantity. So to complete these mini proofs, okay, and they do get longer, some up to 11 steps or more. Um, we're going to get there. We're building small, okay? The most number of steps you have is three on this page. So notice every proof, okay, we complete the proof with a T-chart. The left side is statements, right side is reasons, and you number your statements and reasons as you go. With the reflexive property and a proof, there's only one thing we can write because this is the same for any angle. And I'm just randomly going to pick an angle. Okay, so let's just make that clear. I'm going to take a look at angle COA. And the reflexive property states, and I typically put an X where I use the reflexive property. I don't know why. Did you just see that in all my keys? The reflexive property states that any quantity is congruent to itself. The quantity is this figure here, the angle. So angle... COA is congruent to angle COA. An angle is congruent to itself. Of course it is, right? This seems silly, though. Why do we have to write it? And I'm going to show you in the next proof. 